members. Thank you so much for sharing your evening with us. My name is Sabina Sabedos, and as president of the Slovak American Cultural Center, along with the team, I would like to warmly welcome you to the virtual book launch of Super Slovaks or Super Slovatsi. Tonight, we will explore with the authors their 300 page, vividly illustrated bilingual book that tells the story of Slovakia through 50 Slovak personalities that shape the country. Together, we will journey from the ancient past through the dynamic present via Slovakia's most interesting movers and shakers. Sachs and Global Slovakia first formed their partnership uh, on a book launch called The Legend of the Linden Tree in 2018 in the little town of Linden, New Jersey. And our cooperation has continued since with the publication of Czechoslovakia Behind the Iron Curtain that was released for the occasion of the 30th anniversary of the Velvet Revolution by Global Slovakia. And we are also proudly excited to, uh, to help with the book launch of this new project. In order for the audience to get a sense of the book, we first will have a little bit of a dialogue with the authors. Uh, then we will present some stories from the book. And at the end, the audience will have an opportunity to ask questions of the two authors directly. So at this juncture, let's roll a video about the book just so you can have an idea of what we're talking about. Hi, I'm Zana, Gabby, David. We have so much to be proud of as Slovaks but the greatest treasure of Slovakia are her people. I was born in Slovakia, but grew up in Canada. As a child, I always loved to read books about Slovakia. It was a way for me to connect with the culture and identity. This book is a great way to share your Slovak heritage with your loved ones, from grandparents to grandchildren, from moms and dads to daughters and sons. As an expat, I've always been interested in the history of this country. Through this book, you and your children can learn so much more about Slovakia. Super Slovaks tells the history of Slovakia through 50 exceptional personalities. These were people just like us. Explore the lives of creative Slovaks such as Meister Pavel, inventive Slovaks such as Stefan Bagic, or entrepreneurial Slovaks like Michal Bosak. Did you know that the last man who walked on the moon was Slovak? Role models are very important, and this book provides many role models, from the bravery of Goethe Vlobova, the determination of Peter Sagan, or the skill of Marek Hamšík. They showed us that in having the courage to follow their dreams, they can change not only Slovakia, but also the world. As an experienced history teacher, I know how important it is to talk to children about history and about culture. Each of our bios is followed by a short question which acts as a prompt for exactly those kind of conversations. Super Slovaks is a bilingual book. It's written in English and in Slovak, and its purpose is to unite the Slovak family divided by land and water. Get to know Slovaks from different times and different walks of life. Together, they tell a story of Slovakia. These stories will help you to connect with Slovakia and your homeland. And I'm joined here tonight and I'm honored to be amongst these incredible women who are enthusiastic, brilliant, and accomplished. Uh, Dr. Daniela Berehiziova and Dr. Zuzana Pavlovich, who are the authors of Super Slovak, Super Slovatsi. So tonight we'll get to chat with them a little bit. And to start off, um, if I may, we know each other for, for some time, so I'll be less formal, Zuzka and uh, Gabby. Tell me a little bit about yourselves, you know, your background, and how did you guys cross paths and start on this project? Mm -hmm. So um, some of you guys may already know us, uh, our, our journey, because you've met us either uh, in our presentations in New York or New Jersey, or during our several webinars that we've done successfully with SAC, but we'll just give a little bit more of a background once again. Um, so Gabrielle and I met uh, while we were studying actually in the United Kingdom, just outside of London at the University of Surrey. Uh, both of us were on full PhD scholarships, but studying different uh, facets of Slovakia and Central Eastern European transformation. So I was specializing in migration and Gabriela was specializing in corruption. We met actually, uh, it was a very symbolic lunch. Uh, our supervisor, we had a shared supervisor that specialized and was actually an expert in Slovakia. So he brought us together as new PhDs for this fancy, somewhat formal lunch. And that's where we kicked off a friendship. Um, and uh, that friendship only grew deeper and wider. And we ended up actually living together in our last, I think, uh, year and a half in London. 
So we were finishing our PhDs by day and at, at night kind of releasing our creative juices in, in terms of writing books. And we started with our first book, Slovakia, The Legend of the Linden, which we uh, referred to as the first narrative of, of, of our nation. So Slovakia I mean, has a very complex history. It's located right on the center of Europe on the crossroads, cross, crossroads and cross worlds. Um, and we've never before come across something that really uh, tells the story of Slovakia in an emotional way that people that ne don't necessarily come from there can connect with. And so that's how Slovakia, the legend of the Linden was born. Uh, now it's been several years later and we're on our fourth book. So we have an uh, incredible, we've been blessed with, I guess you could say a lot of uh, productivity and success. And we're just not looking back, we're just looking forward and we keep trying to produce more literature and more um, more knowledge that can be disseminated and appreciated by people, not just in Slovakia, but across the world. That's fantastic. And uh, give us a little background on Global Slovakia and, and what it is, maybe for those that, that aren't aware and um, just kind of, kind of the context and then we'll delve into the book. Sure. So uh, uh, we established Global Slovakia. We're a non-for-profit and our ambition uh, was quite large, which it was to share Slovakia with the world. Um, if we need to kind of specify it, it's more in aspects of sharing Slovakia's culture and its rich uh, um, legacy and history. Uh, we started in the form of books um, and these books were formed mostly because we spent so many years doing our PhDs. I mean, my PhD, if you count our, my master's, was was over seven years. So there was a lot of just reading a lot of books, journal articles, textbooks, attending lectures, conferences. And I just, uh, and the same goes for Gabriella, just had absorbed so much knowledge and it couldn't really go into the PhD. And I didn't, we didn't want to waste it. So we found ways to funnel the, that data, those knowledge, those qualitative, qualitative and quantitative studies and start to put it into books. And that's how we've managed to write uh, books. Um, that really cover a range of topics, whether it's the first narrative of a nation or whether it's talking about migration and the, uh, the Great Return, which was our second book, talking about young people going abroad and coming back to transform Slovakia via the ideas and contacts and languages they acquired abroad. Or our third book, which is a little bit of a um, dark dive into the communist history of Czechoslovakia that with it. Gabby, that was like something like 600 pages. And so now this is our first children's book, Super Slovaks, but Super Slovaks is not just for children, it's actually also for adults. And it's for anyone that really wants to better connect with Slovakia and understand Slovak history through the kind of key personalities, the movers and shakers that shaped her. So, I mean, I, I love the, I've got a sneak preview of, uh, of the electronic version and I tried to dress today to, uh, to match the book cover. Um, but I wanted to ask, you know, what kind of sparked, I mean, I know you're super interested in, in Slovakia and sharing the knowledge and that's so incredible. And this is kind of a first of its kind book that's both bilingual and I think a great resource uh, for, for our community. Um, what sort of sparked your interest? How did you come up with the idea and you realized to start writing it down and you know why, why personalities? Uh, whereas uh, in the beginning you, you really focused on like the, the legend of Lipa was a little bit of a different focus. So yeah. what inspired yeah. you? I guess the focus of this book was really to inspire the next generation. So ultimately, we do want children and youth to read this book and to use this as a reference point, as, as something that shows them a blueprint of what um, the heroes and heroines of Slovakia looked like and just how diverse they were. And you don't just have to be uh, excel in, let's say, um, the startup sector to be successful. Or you don't just have to be a politician to be successful. You can be an artist. You can be a scientist. You can be an athlete. And so it was really to, um, as I said, influence the next generation of Slovaks to become, to start seeing themselves as um not, not just, let's say, normal people, or, but to, to see themselves as, as the creators of their country, because that's exactly what they are. And they're not just creating the future of Slovakia through their actions and their choices and their careers and their dedication and devotion to, the, to that, but they're also having an impact on the world uh, through that, because Slovakia obviously is a part of the world. And so what happens in Slovakia, if you evoke 
positive change in Slovakia. It, it has a butterfly effect to also um, have a positive impact globally. And many of those personalities not only excelled in Slovakia, in fact, they excelled so much they had to spill out into the global context. And that's where they also excelled on an international level. So they were some of the best examples of excellence on the planet. Well, how did you narrow down the list to 50? I think that's that's the hardest part. Um, maybe start off, give us a kind of an idea of like what type of research uh, you did um, and you know, how did you come up with this list of 50 uh, specific sure. um, personalities? So there's of course many, uh, many more people we could have included. So it was very difficult to narrow the list down to 50. And I think Gabriella and David who I actually introduced, I didn't introduce the third co-author on, on this project who wasn't able to join us today. Um, they were pretty frustrated with me because I was constantly changing it and coming up with new names, getting inspiration, speaking with people, sharing this project. And of course, everyone comes back with their perspective or, or the people that maybe, um, you know, known to their community, but not known to ours. Uh, but there is a certain foundation that's there. First of all, David Keyes, he's the third co-author on the project. He's actually um, an experienced educator. He's a history teacher. He works with youth. Um, he has about 20 years teaching experience. Uh, he, he's actually a Slovak expat, originally British, came to Slovakia um, just after it became an independent country in 1995, uh, then went on to work um, internationally nationally in Turkey, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, before returning back to Slovakia in 2005, so 10 years later, and now has been continuously living there with his wife and his children, teaching at the British International School. So he had a certain, obviously, understanding of Slovak history and uh, also uh, what what names are were important, what heroes and heroines were important to present also for, from the perspective of children in terms of shaping them, in terms of influencing them. Uh, Gabriella was uh, very, very key on this project. She's, uh, uh, unlike myself, she's actually born and raised in Slovakia. So she's gone through the entire education system there. She knows um, from the Slovak context what personalities resonate with the Slovak public or who, who are the heroes and heroines presented uh, for, from the Slovak mindset to the Slovak mindset. And then I came in, uh, I, I was uh, born in Slovakia, but I was raised actually in North America and Canada um, and later in the United States. So um, for me, this project was also a means of kind of discovery. So I had been coming back to Slovakia every summer and every Christmas before moving back uh, from, the, uh, from the point of 18 years uh, from, from, from the point I was 18 years old. And so I was discovering the personalities that shape this country by just being in this country. So you start to notice, okay, what are, who are the squares named after? Who are these streets named after? Um, who are these busks that you see or these statues? Who, like, who, who are these names? What did they do? So I, I was my, also my own means of self-discovering Slovakia and self-discovering my identity by going through this journey, by physically seeing um, what was, let's say, cast in stone um, and in terms of what resonated with this, with this nation. And just, uh, I have a very interesting example today, um, Samuel uh, Durovic and uh, Durkovic and I, um, we had a meeting for um, our One Slovak Family Initiative, which some of you may know about, I'm not gonna go into detail, but it was basically, um, we were meeting uh, some parliamentarians today to discuss this initiative for the, uh, the reform of the Slovak Citizenship Act. And where we met was Namestie Alexandra Dubčeka. So it's uh, Alexander Dubček Square. And that's just like one example of how you come across the, the personalities that are important to a people. And, and, and that's really seeing it in the places, um, places, streets, monuments, busks, et cetera. I find it so intriguing the collaboration between the three of you because I think you bring such interesting perspective to the book um, because you have someone who is a native Slovak, others who are expats. Um, so I think, as you said, um, those of us who were born in Slovakia or those of us who grew up learning about Slovakia or those of us who just uh, are picking, uh, you know, are interested in Slovakia now, kind of different perspectives on, on the personalities that you grew up with and, and the historical figures. So I think that's super interesting. Interesting, you know, that you had three different perspectives to kind of um, 
bring uh, bring together uh, the book. How long did it take you to to write the book? Mm -hmm. So we really started to actively write on this project in 2019. Uh, we spent pretty much 2020 in quarantine uh, dedicated to this. Um, Gabby at the time was in Egypt. I was stuck for about six months in India. So this most of Super Slovaks was actually written outside of Slovakia. Uh, so there's another global dimension there, uh, really seeing the country from, from, from the outside in. Um, and it was a beautiful collaboration just actually some people don't understand what it's like to co-author something and Gabrielle have a lot of experience you know multiple books behind us but it was a real pleasure to actually work with David it was just so synchronous and so smooth just sending scripts back and forth this profile that profile let's make this change how about this question and one of the beautiful things that David brought in for example that we wouldn't have thought of is to end every profile um, with a question so a critical question for reflection that a child or youth can ask themselves or a parent can read with their child or actually any adult can reflect upon and some of these questions are more basic but some of them can even be a little bit me metaphysical or or philosophical uh, it depends on how on what depth you take them so I think that's what makes this reading not just passive but also active um, and I'll speak later how we've actually added other components to this book. So it's not just a book, but it's also an activity book and it's a, a, a playing uh, card game that you can um, ha spend having fun with loved ones, family members, your community, et cetera. So there's many ways you can apply this knowledge that you retain from this book. I just absolutely love kind of the way it's, and I was gonna ask you about this question, what's unique about it? Because I did notice that there are after every chapter kind of questions, you know? And so it's it's great dialogue to ask yourself and kind of activities and and you will touch later on the activity books and, and things that this could be, this book is used um, by, by educators as a resource. What did you find um, the most fascinating aspect of your research when kind of pulling together all of this information? What is something that, that st stood out for you that you didn't know that you learned or really that was something that really um, stood out for you? Mm -hmm. I think, um, well, first of all, for me, it was an honor to, to meet these people across, you know, centuries that played a really important role in our region, not just Slovakia, because Slovakia obviously didn't officially exist then until, uh, you know, at the end of the uh, second millennium. So, so uh, there was a lot of time that, where this territory wasn't Slovakia, whether it was Czechoslovakia or the, the Empire of Austria-Hungary or the Kingdom of Hungary. And there were a lot of ethnic Slovaks that played an important role. So for me, that was a pleasure to discover. Um, I also really, really enjoyed um, seeing how if you just follow your own uniqueness, um, you can really end up um, offering a very, very special or unique gift to the world, uh, whether that's playing a violin, uh, whether that's, um, you know, following an impulse to go into politics and eventually, you know, be a leader like Alexander Dubček, which is perhaps one of the most famous, if not the most famous Slovak. Um, so I think it, it, it's inspiring for children, but also in today's era of uncertainty or, you know, sometimes a little bit of gloominess or uh, suffocation because of COVID and all the lockdowns and restrictions and uncertainties. It's nice to read a book like this to uplift you and to see how people persevered because they, yes, these people achieve, these people excel, these people followed their own impulse, uh, their own unique impulse, but they also had to face many challenges and many trials and tribulations and they overcame them because they had their vision, they had their hope, and they believed in, um, they believed in them themselves and what they wanted to achieve. I love that, you know, each of the profiles is really kind of a snapshot of a, a personality. And as you mentioned previously, there are people from all different facets of life, sports stars, you know, pre the president of Slovakia currently, super interesting. And it gives you a taste and then you can do more research. You can learn more about that individual, but it, it's sort of a, a great um, overall text that you're not just focused on one individual like Stefanik and you're reading a 300 page book about him. They're sort of mini profiles. Um, having said that, what was the most interesting super Slovak profile or person in the book um, that you encountered and why? Mm -hmm. He was, he's an architect. He was actually born in um, 
Banska Bistrica to a Slovak father and a Hungarian mother. So, uh, so he's a debated personality. So the Slovaks have claimed him because he was born on the territory of Slovakia. He actually, um, he ended up moving, eventually migrating multiple times and ending up in the United States. But his dying wish was actually to return and be buried in his native Slovakia. And uh, he, is, he changed the world. So each profile is highlighted with a little sentence that says dot, 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 change the world by. And in this case, um, Ladislav Hudek changed the world by building Asia's first skyscraper. So I find that really, really fascinating. It was actually in Shanghai that he achieved this feat. And um, there was much, much hardship that he went through. And uh, he, he actually played multiple identities as a Slovak, as a Hungarian, and then later as an American migrant. Um, and yet he achieved this phenomenal feat being the first man uh, and, and, and now a European man, and not only just a European man, a Slovak man that designed Asia's first skyscraper, um, a continent as perhaps most renowned for its exceptional, or China is most renowned for its exceptional architecture. So he was a, a catalyst there, this young boy from Banska Bistrica. We do have so many inspirational figures. Now, your book also um, has some characters that uh, we might not anticipate being included in the book, um, and some might venture to say um, we're villains or, or judged by historians as having a kind of negative persona. Uh, for example, um, Vladimir Mechiar. So what was the thought process and reasoning for including some of these figures in this book? So we, uh, we understood that this was a, a uh, somewhat controversial um, theme to include. Uh, we included two not so super Slovaks are actually uh, villains um, in the 50 uh, Slovaks. And this is Vladimir Mechiar, but also Gustav Husak. And um, we understood that this could possibly create some backlash for the book, but we also stood by our decision because we we understood that it's not possible to narrate the history of Slovakia, especially the 20th century of history of Slovakia without mentioning these two men, Mechiar and Husak. However, we did not want to portray them as super or as heroes, and which is why at the back of the book, we actually list, uh, we list um, this book is about 48 super Slovaks and their true stories of bravery and adventure, creativity and skill. And since there are no heroes without villains, this book also represents two stories of not so super Slovaks. Together, they, re they reveal a history of Slovakia. We were also very careful because we understand that children are impressionable and we don't want to suggest that these two men were heroes. In fact, they were anti-heroes. So we made sure that we put um, their, their two profiles actually on gray paper uh, with very clear red markings asking the children or the parents or whoever is reading it with them, as well as the adults that read this on their own to reflect why these two men don't go down in history as heroes even though they could since they were in these leadership positions and um, they made decisions that had lasting effect um, on, on Slovakia, on millions of people. So that's why we've included them and we very much stand by our decisions. And actually that's something we look forward to maybe opening up in the Q&A if, if your audience has any, any questions, Gabriela and I will do our best to answer them. Well, thank you. Um, I also see I follow you on social media and you've put together such a brilliant campaign about this project and this book launch promoting um, promoting this. And I'm wondering how the greater community is responding to Super Slovaks and, you know, who is your target audience? We sort of um, mentioned that and, and why. Um, and why do you think this book is so important for for not only Slovaks, Slovak Americans, but really the greater the, the greater world? Why? why why is it so integral for people to read this book? Yeah. So Sabina, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for, for coordinating your outfit with our cover. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot to mention that. It's really, I was just looking at the colors right now. It's very nice. Um, yeah, so with uh, this is the interesting thing with our NGO and uh, our, all of our actual projects is that they they aspire to speak to multiple audiences that are actually very diverse and usually don't have any points of convergence. So that's, um, 
makes it very difficult to communicate in ways that appeal to these different groups. And I'll get more specific because I know that sounds very abstract. But um, the ambition behind our work is actually to function as a bridge. So to unite communities. And in this case, Super Slovaks is written in Slovak so that Slovaks here um, can share this book with their children or Slovak schools can purchase this book um, as, a, as an education tool. Uh, to, to raise um, national awareness, to show leadership examples, because in, in, in Slovakia's case, um, you know, in America, there is very much a healthy hero culture or in the United Kingdom, you know, there's also a very healthy hero culture. You have examples of le positive leadership of heroes and heroines in all walks of life, whether it's firefighters, doctors, um, the local barista, you know, that innovates something. Um, but in Slovakia, uh, the hero culture is pretty much non-existent. And it has to do, of course, with the totalitarian legacy here. But it also goes much deeper than that. You know, Slovakia was essentially a territory that was part of the Kingdom of Hungary. So Slovaks were always in the lesser position um, within the Kingdom of Hungary. And this kind of somewhat continued even with the establishment of Czechoslovakia, Slovaks were the lesser brother, et cetera. We had no experience, uh, this, this region or uh, these people have had no experience of being rulers, of having the experience of sovereignty and running a country and running a state is very, very new, you know, since 1993. So being able to have examples of positive leadership of Slovaks being, you know, heroes and heroines is, is a kind of new concept here. And it's really very much debated, you know, it's still, uh, people focus, don't see the bigger picture, they, they you know, they focus in on the details, uh, they go for the safe bets like Stefanik, you know, uh, of course, he's the greatest Slovak, next in line is Dubček. Uh, but if you start to expand that ladder, uh, there's a lot of people that say, nay, yay, uh, there's basically a lot of arguments going back and forth about who is a hero. And I think that's what, why it was really important that Gabby, David, and I wrote this book because we, we, we have an inside perspective, but we also have an outside perspective. And we don't get so caught up in the domestic de debate. We can span out, see things from the bigger picture and uh, you know, say, okay, these are the 50 personalities. That doesn't mean you know, only these 50 people influence Slovakia. There, there's a lot more. Of course, there can be many more volumes, but this is our perspective and this is our, our first contribution to doing a project like this. So uh, one more thing. So just the title itself, Super Slovaks, is, pre, is, is almost a little bit of a trigger word also in Slovakia because Slovaks are not used to presenting themselves as super. In fact, if one wanted to survive, also in the kingdom, within the kingdom of Hungary, it was better to deny the superness of your Slovak and blend in in terms of speaking the Hungarian language and excelling professionally like that, but maintaining the Slovak identity privately within the home. And of course, in the totalitarian regime, any form of excellence that wasn't approved by the party, which was basically hard sciences or athletics, uh, was punished. So people learned how to just kind of, you know, keep their head down, not excel. And that was the whole point of life because excelling at something or standing out puts you and your family at risk. Um, now, so that's one audience and why we think this, the domestic audience and why we think this project is very important for them. And um, the, the second audience we're speaking to is a global audience. Uh, first of all, the diasporas uh, from the older diasporas that left you know, at the turn of the 19th and 20th century and throughout the 20th century, there are people that have been fleeing Slovakia in waves, um, uh, mostly of course, during the second world war, people who are fleeing Hitler and then throughout the totalitarian regime um, in total, there was uh, some nearly a million people that fled out of Czechoslovakia um, after 48 and of course again at 68 cumulative. Uh, so so we've produced this uh, book for that community as a means to connect with their culture, connect with their identity, connect with their heritage and even pass it on to their progeny that were maybe born in Canada, Australia, England, United States, and share that little bit of their homeland or their identity with their children and grandchildren. And the last wave that we're speaking to is actually this new diaspora wave, uh, Slovakia, 
continues to have a very large uh, out migration or outpouring of human capital um, abroad. And now um, a lot of this migration is concentrated within the European Union because Slovakia ascended to the EU in 2004 and gained the freedom of movement. So Slovaks can basically keep their Slovak passports but gain the same privileges as a German or up until recently a Brit or a French person in terms of access to a labor market of living in these foreign countries. So you're seeing a lot of Slovak ex expatriates living abroad that now have children perhaps born abroad and they want um, to be able to pass on their culture and their language to their child or basically practice it at home after school or on weekends. So we produced this book also for them, it's bilingual. This way the child can learn it also in English but also practice their Slovak and therefore maintain their, their, their bond to, to their, their native land or the native land of their parents. And one of those primary bonds of course is language. And the second one is culture. Um, and the third one is history. So knowing these important personalities is a way that the child can bond with Slovakia. And this is how our work and how this book is actually helps to unify the Slovak family. And I mentioned that in the video, divided across land and water whether it's the um, Atlantic Ocean or whether it's um, you know, the different territories of countries within the European continent. We want to be able to create these kind of bonds through our work that Slovaks around the world can use these as tools to connect with Slovakia. Well, I'm absolutely in, uh, fascinated by the book and by you two ladies, and I think you should be in your own book. Um, you sort of alluded to perhaps multiple volumes. Uh, so that's sort of exciting as well to build on it. There are so many incredible Slovaks um, and we should be proud of, of our accomplishments uh, throughout the centuries. And, and this book um, is a great, great way to um, to read about some of these personalities. So at this juncture, I wanna thank you um, for taking the time to answer my questions. I'd love to hand it over to you um, and to Gabriella now to give us a little bit of a presentation on some of the personalities that are featured in the book so that our audience can see. And then after we can do a question and answer from the audience and you can also learn more about where you can purchase this book, how you can support this project and how you can add it to your collection. Here we start off with a map of Slovakia and um, you can't really see it on the PowerPoint because it's quite small, but there's little numbers essentially throughout the territory. And these little numbers, um, orbs that are in the map actually correspond uh, to a legend. And in that legend are the 50 personalities or the 50 super Slovaks. And one of the reasons we created this map was to really show children um, that super Slovaks are not just concentrated in Bratislava. Things are not just happening in Bratislava, but actually they're happening all over Slovakia. These exceptional people human capital, talent, national assets, however you want to frame it, are born um, in towns and villages all over this country. So we wanted the child to be able to self-identify, oh, these, this person comes from my village or town or city or region. So we're just going to give you a little bit of a teaser of some of the personalities that we have featured in the books. Uh, there's uh, 50 portraits and we worked with five different artists. Uh, four of them are from Slovakia and one is actually from Russia. She did a lot of the artwork for our third book, uh, Czechoslovakia Behind the Iron Curtain. So we really liked working with Masha and we brought her in again into this project. And working with five different artists means that you can create um, a diversity of artwork or art, artistic expression or styles. And I think that's also what makes this book unique that it's not the same type of artwork for all 50 personalities, but they're interchange um, different styles, different artists, and you really get to experience different interpretations of how these historical uh, figures are seen. Uh, we started off the book with actually Svetopluk. Um, he is, um, 
a very special man. He actually uh, changed uh, the world by establishing the first Slavic state in Central Europe. And actually, uh, Great Moravia or Velka Morava was um, established even before the Kievan Rus. So the Kievan Rus is uh, the state um, seed for, uh, for, for the Russian Empire, for Russia, for modern day Russia, they, they refer to the Kievan Rus, but actually the first Slavic state was um, established on the territory of present day Czechoslovakia, and it was Velka Morava, and it actually spanned a very wide region, um, mainly Czechia, Slovakia, Slovenia, and bits of Poland. And um, because uh, this territory, as expensive as it was, did also include modern day Slovakia, people in Slovakia referred to Svetopuk sometimes um, or often as the Slovak king. If we could go to the next one, please. So this is um, artwork that's made by David Martin, a very talented uh, young artist um, emerging out of Slovakia. Um, I personally really love his style. Uh, this is a portrait of Meister Pavel. Uh, he changed the world by creating extraordinary skill, uh, art of extraordinary skill and beauty. Um, most of his uh, great sculpture, or his, one of his greatest sculptures is actually in Levoča. And uh, he's very much a mystery in Slovakia, even today in the 21st century, because we know so little about him. He created this exception, these exceptional wooden sculptures that we see in churches. Um, but he signed them, but he, we actually have no reference to what he looked like. Um, so, yeah, so we can actually go to the next slide. Now here is a portrait um, by another artist that we worked with, Lucia uh, Gretkova. And uh, this is a, a, a female uh, super Slovak that many people may not know, and certainly not many people internationally. Her name was uh, Pana Cinka, or Cinka Pana. And she changed the world uh, in the 1700s or in the 17th century, excuse me, by challenging gender roles. Uh, she was born in uh, 1711. And uh, she was very much, she was actually Romani. So she was a gypsy girl. She was born into a gypsy family, gypsy community, and uh, showed uh, to be quite talented or adept at playing instruments, in particular the violin. At the time, um, although there were gypsy bands, they certainly did not have a female um, lead or a female that played an instrument. If, there, if, if uh, Romani women were involved, it was in the form of singing or dancing. In this case, uh, she persevered. She wanted to play her violin. And um, because of it, uh, she left a legacy in our region. And um, her band was so famous, it was actually invited uh, into the Viennese court to play before the Empress Maria Teresa. If we could go to the next one. Okay, Michal Bosak, uh, some of you, especially from the um, American, Slovak American community may know him. He uh, changed the world in, in the Slovakian context, we say by um, daring and to, to, to dream and, and eventually succeed uh, at um, completing the American dream. Uh, he was a very poor young fellow that emigrated to uh, the East Coast of the United States. Uh, eventually, his, um, he took entrepreneurial inspiration by what he saw around him and became um, formed a money lending service to Slovak emigres. Uh, this became very successful before he took part in other ventures and he became a multimillionaire and was actually featured on the $10, US $10 note. And uh, one of um, our modern super Slovaks uh, that we feature in this project is actually our current uh, Madam President, Zuzana Chaputova. Uh, she was an environmental, she changed the world in terms of becoming the first female president in Slovakia. 
but she's very much um, celebrated uh, in Slovakia, but even more so in our region and in the countries that neighbor us for her, for her grace, for the way she handles herself as a stateswoman, um, for being so level-headed and for being so, um, I guess, uh, stately, uh, unlike a lot of the things, uh, a lot of a lot of the archetypes or expressions you do see in present-day Slovak politics. She's like a calm water. She's like a swan. And uh, but before she was elected as president, um, she was an environmental activist. Um, she championed um, various causes. One of them was a toxic waste dump actually here in Pezinok, where I'm actually greeting you from this evening. And uh, at some point in her life, uh, re very recently, she decided to cross over into politics. She entered the campaign for president originally as a, a non-political candidate and nobody expected her to win. In fact, uh, I don't think Gabby and I even, ex uh, we, we didn't expect her to win. We were just like, wow, this woman is very brave, but certainly there's no chance and her numbers were very, very low. And then um, towards the end of the campaign, there was an unexpected twist of fate or um, the wheel of fortune turned in her favor and she started to gather steam and uh, accumulate more and more support from the public. And uh, the rest is history. She's currently the first female president in Slovakia in Slovak history. And A Super Slovaks is this 300-page book where um, you're able to encounter these 50 personalities, the heroes and heroines, or the movers and shakers of Slovak history um, in English as well as in Slovak. But um, what our offer does not end there. Uh, one of the things that we're really proud of is actually this Super Slovaks card game. Uh, in Slovak, we've, it's known as Cherny Peter. In uh, English, it's called, uh, particularly in, in Britain, it's a popular, popular game. It's called Old Maid. And you pair certain Super Slovaks that come from a certain um, background, be it, let's say, science, photography, innovation, entrepreneurialism. And um, the person that's left with the old maid or the Chiani Peter loses. But in this case, we innovated it and actually twisted it and made it something positive. And in this case, it, so we call it um, Super Slovak's Chiani Peter, but actually Zlata Petra, Golden Petra edition. Petra Vohova is one of our Super Slovak athletes. Um, she's actually recently uh, world champion and the best skier in the world right now so she's very hot stuff we tried our best to reach out to her to engage her in our campaign but uh, there's some pretty stiff competition from sponsors that are willing to pay a lot of money to get her face on their products so we're very honored that she supported us in terms of gracing us with her presence and allowing us to feature her in our book and of course also name this card game after her the golden petra edition We'll go to the next slide. And again, it might be a little bit difficult to see this on your screen, uh, screen, but here you see the complete package that comes with the Super Slovaks product offer. So you have the hardcover book. It's a glossy cover. It's going to be high print quality, 300, about approximately 300 pages or 270 six or 78 it's still being finalized and along with that comes the card game super slovaks as well as this activity book now the activity book is 136 pages it's also an electronic form and it's bilingual and this is where it particularly caters to children and this is where david david's our co-author david key's expertise as an educator as a long-term children's educator comes in he helped to craft a lot of these activities and they're um they're, they're, they're a way that the child can apply not just passively receive this knowledge and lock it somewhere in their subconscious mind and do away with it, but actually actively apply what they learned and apply it uh, through by asking questions, engaging in certain activities and applying it to their lives. So right now during COVID, I mean, the things are opening up also in Slovakia, but this is a great way to keep your, your children or grandchildren entertained, um, entertained and also learning something while they're stuck at home. 
Thank you. We can go to the next slide. And here you see our NGO. We're, we're actually in the process of upgrading our website. Uh, we hope to make it easier for you to have access to our various content, um, be whether it's our webinars, our online webinars, or our Global Slovakia Academy. We have two new courses coming forward, or our books, which can be purchased on Amazon, or um, or via the website, via electronic format on our website. So you can go to globalslovakia.com or you can follow us at Global Slovakia um, via Facebook. That's where we often communicate uh, the most to what's happening as well as sharing knowledge on that platform. And currently this book, uh, Super Slovaks, is actually launched through a crowdfunding platform in Slovakia. It's called Izopo. There are partners on this project. So our goal is to raise 6k uh, we have about 24 or 26 more days to achieve that uh, so far out of that 6k we've reached the halfway point uh, where we're just over 3,000 some so we have some 200 backers so we still have quite a way to go but we are we're confident that we're going to reach our 6k goal and um, and if we achieve that goal that means we can then print this book and distribute it not only to the people that supported the project, but also at Slovak bookstores across the country. So I think Gabriela will be sharing the link uh, where you can support us. And that's the only place where you can get the complete package. And there's that's a really good value for your money. You don't just get the book, but you get the paper activity book and the electronic activity book and the card game. If you happen to be an educator that's listening to this uh, webinar, then uh, there is a special package for school and that's actually 10 super Slovak books so no additionals um, just the book itself for 129 euros so that again is a very good cost savings there and um, you're not only getting a beautiful product that you know has been years in the making it has three minds actively dedicated to it uh, lots of years of knowledge or decades of knowledge behind it but you're also uh, making this project possible and making the printing of this project possible. And the ambition is not just to, we have this very grand ambition to get this book into every Slovak family across the world, but eventually uh, the higher ambition behind this project is to get this book into the Slovak education system. There is a lot of, um, the education system still needs to go through a lot of reform. It's one of the last systems in Slovakia, along with the a judicial system that has not gone through reform after the collapse of the totalitarian regime or has gone through very little reform. And uh, there's very much a need for new, fresh, innovative content that speaks to children um, in the 21st century and uh, frames history and knowledge and personalities in a way that resonates to them. So we hope that this book eventually, whether it takes one year, whether it takes 10 years, uh, can, can have a positive impact in Slovak schools and libraries. So that's it. Um, I would, we would love to open it up for Q&A. Uh, Sabina, if you wanna moderate that further. Sure, sure. So, um, do we have some audience questions? I think we can, you should I, be able I to- I would like to offer a comment. I, I think this is absolutely amazing. And I wanted to share two little vignettes about what's so special about it. One is the, the 50 Slovaks. There's also a book on the market that tells the history of India in 50 personalities. What? Yes. That's the amazing. Thing is, I have, you have to send me the link, Johnny, for that. I can do that. Uh, the goal of that is to present Indian history. Your goal, first and foremost, as I see it, is to inspire children. Those are very different goals. And the way the books are composed reflects those different goals. So I think you've done something very special, even though that number 50 has been used in a different context. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the other uh, point I would like to offer is what you said about the importance of being uh, proud of leading figures in your heritage and how that is not, has not been typical for Slovaks. Uh, at, as you know, I 
also wrote a book about my family uh, a decade ago now. And one of the women who read it uh, grew up in an immigrant Slovak family. And she came to me after she finished it and she said, Johnny, this is the first book I have ever read that made me proud to be a Slovak. I was raised in America to be ashamed of being a Slovak because we were poor, we were uneducated, we came from a place that nobody ever heard of, and the goal was to assimilate. So, so there is this legacy that, that you are seeking to, to transform, and I think that that's absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, actually, Johnny, for bringing up that shame, um, shame comment reference, because that is not just, I think, for the immigrant communities. Um, I myself am, you know, I'm a child of immigrants. My family immigrated to Canada, and the longer we stayed, the less and less Slovak we spoke in the home, just because my our parents did really want us to assimilate. Um, it's very natural, but also that shame is very much present in Slovakia. Um, that's why I said the the actual title is audacious super Slovaks. How dare we call Slovaks super? And uh, that just triggers uh, people here to hear it, to see it. Um, and I think it's really important to normalize that. It's like, yes, you know, we, we have, ex we're an exceptional country. We have exceptional people that come from this country. In fact, uh, I, I sometimes refer to the Slovakia as a little country of champions. It seems that like everybody is, is excellent, you know? Uh, your neighbor is an, is an Olympian and it's completely normal or, you know, so-and-so is a member, of, is an MP. And again, it's completely normal. It's just so normalized. Uh, excellence is like it's not seen. And I think it's really important to spotlight it and to show people, also Slovak people, just how exceptional they are. Thank you, Dr. Palka. Anyone else that would like to share, uh, have a question or have a comment about what they've seen? So I see one in the in the chat. What criteria did you use to select the 50 Slovaks featured in your book? That's from Paul. If you can elaborate on that. So. Yeah. Hi, Paul. Great question. Yeah. So we we had a, a certain triangulation. I guess it's a research term I used in my PhD days, and that uh, was that reference point between uh, Gabriella, David, and I, each coming at it from different perspectives. Uh, me as you know this expat or Slovak emigre returnee. Uh, Gabriela as native Slovak, educated in Slovakia all the way through her master's education before she went off to study in the United Kingdom. So very much anchoring that domestic perspective of who's important historically. And then David Keyes coming in as an educator, but also as a history teacher. So with a passion for history and it was a passion for Slovakia. So he had been since 1995, uh, really uh, looking at Slovak personalities, studying Slovak personalities, and, and very much seeing the gap in terms of any kind of product like this on the market, any kind of book that really showcases these people. And one of the inspirations behind this book is that we really wanted to keep it free and not scientific. Obviously, we're communicating to mostly children and, and youth, young adults. Uh, one of our inspirations for this book was actually a very, very popular book uh, showcasing a woman positive examples of female leadership and that was called rebel girls and it became um, on kickstarter i believe it was the most successful crowd camp crowd funding campaign for a book ever they 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 fundraise about a million uh, million dollars and um, this book is pretty much in every household uh, or every middle class household in in Europe and maybe also in the U.S. so that that also served as an inspiration the the profiles were very concise the selection of women were very diverse and the artwork was very vivacious uh, a lot of different artists um, each profile a different artist so that's kind of a bl blueprint we we also wanted to follow and I'm very actually pleasantly surprised that a similar book like this exists in India, I would love to see it, especially because so much of Super Slovaks was written when, when I was stuck in, in the quarantine in India. So yeah, that's another beautiful convergence. And it just shows that when uh, a good idea can happen at multiple places across the planet at the same time as the pyramids. Um, so there is, um, hello everyone from me as well, towards the end of our session. 
Uh, thank you for joining us today to celebrate our fourth book. So another question in the chat is uh, a really good one. If you could still include one more, the 51st personality in this book before it gets printed, who would it be? Gabriella, can I, can I hand that over to you? By the way, a beautiful flower shirt. We're again synchronized, accidentally matching. <laughs> I just, I, I love this manifestation. Gabriela and I often do presentations. And one time we had this very memorable one in Romania and for the Slovak, for the old uh, diaspora community in, in Romania, there's pockets of that, that I think date back to the time of Maria Teresa. And we, we came out of the bathroom after a long, you know, multiple hour drive, ready for our presentations and we're ma wearing matching clothes, but I have the shirt and she, or she had the shirt and I had the pants. And in this case, once again, we're, we're matching. It was just a little caveat, but yeah, could you please answer that one? Uh, so to the question, one of my, like all of my favorites are in the book, but there is one that didn't make it. And that's Adam Franciszek Kolar. He is more known, well, he's probably only known in Slovakia, to be honest, uh, but he is nicknamed the Slovak Socrates because he was uh, one of those Renaissance men of many talents and many skills. And uh, he was so valued for his wisdom and his knowledge that he became a personal advisor to Maria Teresa uh, as, as a Slovak and uh, you know, as somebody uh, coming from a country that was not necessarily um, uh, kind of uh, supporting and encouraging uh, and allowing education of children, making it accessible to many, that was a huge achievement at the time. So I would add that one. Let me take this opportunity to thank Dr. Z and Dr. G. Thank you so much for spending the evening with us and for sharing your masterpiece. Uh, you two are incredible, uh, really accomplished women, and this is such a fantastic project. So I hope our audience will take to check out the project. The links are in the chat. What we'll be doing as well as sharing this presentation, uh, this webinar, a recorded version to the Slovak American Cultural Center distribution list, along with the links to where you can uh, purchase the book and contribute to the project. So thank you so much. Uh, Gabby, Zana, we hope that we get to launch this book a second time in person in New York. It's always a pleasure and thank you very much on behalf of the Slovak American Cultural Team. Thank you for joining us tonight. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us and definitely visit Global Slovakia as well to uh, get some more resources and information. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. It's a pleasure. Thank you.